It seems like my struggles when it comes to thermals for my gaming PC, which I've built in this Cooler Master Q500L case, just never seem to want to end. We've done quite a few things to get temps under control, and now we're going to be looking at adding on a heatsink for our M.2 NVMe SSD. Let's see if it was worth it. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here, welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. For this video, we'll be taking a look at a cheap heatsink I bought off of Amazon for 14 bucks to use on my M.2 NVMe SSD, which is a 1TB Western Digital Black SN750, which is a Gen 3 NVMe. When it comes to the Cooler Master Q500L, I made a couple different videos involving this case and how negatively it impacts thermals for major PC components like the CPU and GPU. At first, we saw how I had to upgrade my CPU cooler from the stock Wraith Prism for my Ryzen 5 3600. Then I talked about undervolting my RTX 3080, which was absolutely necessary in order to not turn this case into an absolute hotbox. While those changes did help improve thermals, the system overall still runs fairly hot. It's just unavoidable at this point, especially with the kinds of components I'm using in here. Now one concerning thing I noticed when using this system to game on was that my NVMe SSD was operating at some pretty high temps. I'd even say they were dangerously high. According to Western Digital's own datasheet, the specifications for the operating temps for their SN750 line of SSDs is between 0 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius, which means in order to expect optimal performance and to abide by the life expectancy that WD has indicated for this drive, your operating temps should be within that range. If you go above 70 degrees Celsius, you'll experience some problems such as performance issues or worse crashes which I can actually attest to. So I've been playing a lot of Dishonor 2 lately and during one of my gameplay sessions I noticed that the drive was running at around 74 degrees celsius and you can see that it even peaked at around 76 which is obviously running at above the safe range. The reason why it's running so hot is because the M.2 slot is right underneath the one PCIe x16 slot that my RTX 3080 slots into. So the SSD when installed sits right underneath the GPU exposed to all that heat. At first I thought I'd just run with it as I didn't have any issues with it before, but one day while gaming I just randomly had a crash. Now Dishonored 2 has been known to have some major bugs and issues as well as being poorly optimized. A lot of those issues have been ironed out now, but I remember this game was a mess when it came out. So I thought, okay, no worries, that happens, I'll just reboot it again. However, when I clicked play in Steam, it would appear as though the game was going to launch, but then it wouldn't. And then the play button would then turn green again as if I hadn't launched it. Tried it again, the result was the same. So I thought, okay, that's a bit weird. I thought maybe some game file got corrupted or something, and I tried to do the whole verify integrity of cache or game files, whatever it's called in Steam and that wasn't working either. I then thought, okay, let me just try launching another game to see if Steam was acting up. So I tried booting up Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and the same result. Tried booting up Dragon's Dogma, same thing. So I thought maybe Steam was acting a bit bizarre, so I exited Steam, stopped any related processes, and started it up again, and nothing had changed. I then went through the game folders in the drive, only to find out that while the game folders were showing up, nothing was actually in them. It's as if all the games were uninstalled somehow, they did it by themselves, which was weird. What makes this situation even more bizarre is that I do also have a few other DRM free games installed that aren't launched through any client, and even those game folders appeared the same way as if they got uninstalled. So this is when I started to get really concerned because I had never actually encountered a problem like this, but I did start suspecting it might be driver related, and then that's what also prompted me to check the temps in hardware info, only to find out that the drive was running above 70 degrees celsius while gaming. So I thought perhaps a safeguard in the drive's firmware was tripped to prevent it from getting any hotter. I finally restarted the system and everything was back to normal. However, this problem did occur a few more times, and I did notice it occur once the drive had been running at those fairly high temps. This is when I decided that I'll have to do something to help keep those temps in check, but unlike a GPU where you can apply an undervolt, you can't do the same to an SSD. However, what we can do is add our own cooling solution to it. Now the version of the SN750 that I have is the one that comes without the heatsink. There is a heatsink version, and I wished I had gotten that one instead, but no matter, on Amazon there are plenty of heatsinks you can find. I chose this one by a brand that sounds like they just mashed their keyboard and said, alright, we're good, but this is a rebranded, uh, heatsink from a brand called Yetang. I had no specific reasons for choosing this heatsink. It seemed to have decent reviews, it was cheap, and I could get it delivered the fastest, so I went with it. There are a lot of other options on Amazon, some come with some fans on them, some have RGB, so I just wanted to see just how effective the SSD heatsink will be, and will it solve our problem? Will it even be worth it? 
So opening up the box, the heatsink comes with some screws, three thermal pads, which is great because you only need two, so they give you one extra, and you also get a small Phillips head screwdriver. As for the heatsink, there's not much to say here. It's got a simple rectangular design similar to the drive itself. It's 3 inches long, 0.95 inches wide, and 0.4 inches thick. It's made out of aluminum, has some fins on the top for more surface area, which helps to help increase dissipation for heat, and the other side is completely flat. The base plate is also made out of metal too. That's pretty much all there is to say about the design, it's just a red metal heatsink guys, it's nothing special. <laughs> Installing the heatsink is actually very simple and straightforward. First what I did was that I carefully took off the drive label as I didn't want the sticker to infer interfere or obstruct thermal transfer. I want optimal cooling here, but I did make sure to at least remove it and place it on the extra plastic film that came on the thermal pads to help preserve it in case I need to put it back on for warranty purposes. Now double check with your regional laws as removing this sticker or tampering with it might void your warranty. Here in Canada and the US, these stickers aren't enforceable. After that, I took one of the included thermal pads and installed it on the bottom of the SSD. The pads aren't really sticky, so you can take them off and realign them, which I thought was pretty good because I suck at doing stuff like this. Next step was to apply the second thermal pad on the top where you have your DRAM, NAND flash, and storage controller. Since at this point the drive was pretty much already in the base plate, aligning the thermal pad should be much easier. Make sure to take off the plastic protective film off the thermal pad. Once you're done that, it's just a matter of placing the heatsink on the top and snapping it right into place. The next step is to install the screws on the sides to secure the heatsink to the SSD, and when you're doing this, make sure you're firmly pressing down on it so it makes good contact with the drive, otherwise it will be too loose and the drive might even be able to shift around, which is something we definitely don't want, because then there's going to be no thermal transfer there. Once it's installed, it'll look a little something like this, definitely making it a little bit more bulkier, but hopefully for the better. However, what I do like is that even with the heatsink installed, it still got a pretty low profile when installed in the M.2 slot. So that it does not protrude out too much and interfere with the graphics card. Alright, so with the heatsink installed, we can definitely see a pretty considerable drop in temps. While playing Dishonored 2, I noticed that the drive would be running with temps in the high 60s, averaging around 67 degrees Celsius. So this heatsink is definitely effective in terms of helping us alleviate those high temps we were experiencing, and now it's running in the acceptable range in regards to operating temperatures. I also didn't encounter any crashes or those weird drives issues that I was seeing before. For 14 bucks, this most certainly was worth it. It didn't meet their bold claim of dropping temps anywhere from 10 to 30 degrees as advertised, but to be fair, I am using this drive in a case which has atrocious thermals, so perhaps if you were to put this heatsink on a drive in a case with at least half decent airflow, you'd probably get much better results than I did. At least this was a simple cost effective add-on that I'm able to utilize to help bring down temps. So if you're someone who has also been experiencing concerningly high temps for their M.2 drives and your motherboard doesn't come with any sort of heat spreader and you're looking for ways to help reduce temps then definitely check out the Yetang M.2 SSD heatsink. I'll drop some links down below in the video description for some various options. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.